And our special guest at the top of this hour, former RNC chairman Ken Melman, Richard Sacaridis, former president of Equality Matters, and openly gay Rhode Island Congressman David Cicilline. Gentlemen, it's great to have you here, but I want to start with our exclusive interview with Ken Melman, former RNC chair, former campaign manager, former campaign manager for President George W. Bush's 04 campaign. And Ken, publicly, you came out in 2010. It's I been did. written about you uh, that you are the highest profile gay Republican in American history. Uh, it just crossed the wires from Reuters saying that the U.S. Supreme Court, who is hearing the oral arguments right now, uh, say that the conservative justices are troubled by the Obama administration's refusal to defend the marriage law. As a lawyer, how do you interpret what's coming out of the court right now? Well, I was actually in the uh, hearing yesterday in the oral argument. I'm on the board of AFER, which is the organization that brought the Proposition 8 lawsuit with Ted Olson and David Boies. And what I saw yesterday were justices that were taking a very serious issue very seriously. They were asking a lot of very tough questions to all three of the counsel uh, that were appearing before them. Uh, they recognized the enormity of what they were dealing with. What was interesting to me, though, was that you heard from all sides two things that I think are really important. One was how important the issue of marriage is, how central it is to an individual as a person, to their freedom, to their essence. It's, as Ted Olson said, the single most important relationship you have. And the second thing was the fundamental nature of that right, which in my judgment and in our judgment, the Constitution ought to protect. So a lot of discussion, a lot of issues. Clearly the court was wrestling with it, as they should. It's a very important issue. Uh, as you bring up AFER, and you've also been able to raise millions of dollars in support for marriage equality initiatives across the country, uh, you helm this amicus brief right here. It's now signed, as I understand it, by 135, <laughs> 135. Uh, different Republicans. They've signed on in favor of marriage equality. Correct. Do you think these efforts are now going to pay off? As we're hearing, there is hesitation from all angles about whether or not any of these issues should be coming before the Supreme Court, as it were. Uh, hesitation from even Kennedy himself, considered to be the most pivotal swing vote. Well, look, I think anybody who thinks that you can watch an oral argument and then predict what their court is going to do uh, should be disabused of that. Certainly the decision in the uh, health care case showed that was uh, foolhardy to try to do that. Uh, what I think, what I hope that that brief does is it reflects how a lot of folks think around the country. Uh, and that is uh, make the conservative case for why we think marriage as a fundamental right ought to be available to all Americans, gay or straight. And we make three fundamental points in that brief. The first point we make is that fundamentally this is about freedom and the job of courts, even if you as we do, don't believe uh, in the courts getting involved in decisions that ought to be left to the legislature and the people. When a fundamental right is involved, if you believe in limited government, then it is the job of courts in some circumstances to come in and say, the state or a referendum have violated a fundamental right. That's our first argument. And as you, well, real quickly, though, because on that point specifically, I want to play some sound from yesterday sure. of what we heard uh, that plays very well into what you're saying about how the court might come down on this. Take a listen. Oh, sorry, I thought we had the sound from inside the court yesterday because, uh, I, forgive me, uh, this is really where they were showing their, uh, their hands, so to speak, and tipping uh, the fact that they were conservative yep. uh, on whether or not they wanted to come back with something up or down. Maureen Dowd, though, wrote, wrote in the New York Times that courting cowardice, Swing Justice Anthony Kennedy grumbled about uncharted waters and the fuddy duddies seemed to be looking for excuses to make a sweeping ruling. Their questions reflected a unanimous craven impulse. How do we get out of this? This court is plenty bold, imposing bad decisions on the country, like anointing W president or allowing unlimited money to flow covertly into campaigns, but given a chance to make a decision, putting them on the right and popular side of history, they squirm. Uh, why do you think the justices are so cautious? Well, again, I think it's a mistake to try to predict based on questions where the justices are. You know, it's interesting, there was a lot of discussion in, in, the, in the media, there's a lot of discussion about the fact that uh, we're in uncharted waters. In some ways, I think we're not. You know, marriage for 5,000 years has been an institution that has helped improve societies all over the world where it's, where it's been applied. It's helped encourage stability. It's helped make sure that when someone gets old, uh, there is available to them someone else who will care for them. It's helped encourage mutual commitment. Uh, and it's helped raise kids. And what we're saying is to take a group of people and say you are excluded from this conservative institution, this institution that promotes family values, this institution that is positive for society is wrong. And it's unfair to the 37,000 children, for example, and you heard this from Justice Kennedy yesterday, who today are being raised by loving couples who happen to be of the same gender in California. The fact that their moms or dads can't get married uh, that hurts those children. So we think that from a lot of different perspectives, a freedom perspective or a promoting family values perspective, 
it makes sense for the court to, in fact, overturn proposition. One thing that you've been very good at is using your connections that you have uh, to reach out and get people to cross the aisle within the Republican Party to come forward, show their support for this. One thing we saw was Laura Bush not wanting to be a part of a marriage equality ad where they used her sound from a CNN interview where she came out in support of marriage equality. Uh, she has to be taken out of that. Do you feel disappointed by that? And are you working privately behind the scenes to get the former president and Mrs. Bush to get involved? Look, I was very happy when the former first lady indicated some time ago that she supports uh, the freedom to marry. I think that's her position. Uh, whether she wants to be in a particular ad or not, I think is a much less important question. The fact is she's been on the record in saying that. I respect uh, her very much, and I appreciated her position, as I did when Vice President Cheney uh, took that position. So uh, I want to ask you, though, as a Maryland guy, a guy that lives in New York, and also a fellow guy, Maryland guy, correct, fellow Maryland guy, and a guy that lives in New York, but also yeah. in D.C. a lot, are your plans to get married? Uh, I have no plans at the moment to get married, but if you've got any good telephone numbers, let me know. Uh, all right. Well, if you want to do any live proposals once we do get those telephone